We're all worried about Dr. Max Goodwin, mm -hmm. his cancer diagnosis. Is he going to be okay? Um, you know, it's based on, um, a uh, true story, and Eric and his fight um, with cancer, and he, uh, thank God, was uh, successful in, in fighting that. So yeah, I think Just had ultimately- Just got his 70th, didn't he? he yeah, uh, it's coming up, right? Is it coming up? Yeah. Yeah, he's And uh, yeah, he's an amazing guy. And so, yes, I think Max ultimately um, will be okay, spoiler alert. But it, I mean, maybe not, we're not, it's not exactly. Yeah, some people may not know that it's based on a true story, and maybe that a hospital's a central character, yeah, but. Yeah, we'll but uh, don't uh, fail. No, I'm teasing. Um, but, um, but but yeah, yeah. No, no, you go. I was gonna say another statistic just flew into my head then, which because we did all this research when we were doing the job, and like there's I think it's something like 15.5 million living cancer sufferers. Mm. So when you hear the word cancer, I mean it mu it's just the most awful diagnosis, and your brain goes to the worst place. But there's a lot of research going on, and a lot of you know movements are being made in the right direction to kind of ensure that you can survive. Right. Your character cares a lot. Can someone in that position care too much? Certainly, yeah. I mean, I think it comes at a at a cost. And I think for for Max, as a dramatization of Eric, not necessarily Eric, mm -hmm. um, probably probably does. I mean, you know, it's certainly like you look at the episode with um, his sister's heart with the Luna episode and everything. Um, it's you know, he's I think let his you know, personal uh, uh, thoughts and emotions get in the way of the right judgment sometimes, which is uh, something that's interesting to explore. But um, I, I, that, I don't know, but then on the other hand, it's like, who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want somebody who cares beyond caring, who doesn't, you know, unflinchingly yeah. so. So it's, it's, uh, it's tough. How much of the show is based on real events? We saw you fire almost an entire department of surgeons. Will everyone in the cardiac surgical department please raise your hand? Great. Great. Thank you. You're all fired. Some people watching might say, can that happen? And so that did. That did happen. Yes. Eric did that. Yeah, he, re he just started over with that department because as, as you saw in the pilot, it was, had the highest uh, uh, both mortality and infection rates in, in oh certainly God. the city, maybe the state, I forget it, and, and um, or in the country. Um, and so he, uh, yeah, did a lot of things. He created uh, reading programs for kids, educational programs for kids who were, who were at the hospital. Um, he did a lot of things. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I want to talk about that scene when you had to tell him that he had cancer. Mm. Describe that scene to me in shooting it. Well, certainly in in terms of the character storyline, I mean, Max comes along and he's trying to put together this team to make bring the hospital, restore the hospital back to its former glory and to really kind of get it back on its feet and there's been all these people coming and going and, and um, I feel like Dr. Sharp, well she was, she was the last cog in the machine that had to be sort of slotted into place because she was living this kind of different lifestyle and wasn't sure if she wanted to be there at all. So I loved when I read that scene, I was like, oh that's the moment where First of all, she's come back, so it's quite you know reassuring that we're going to go off to a good place. But she has to come and deliver this awful news that mm. this person who's about to make some really amazing positive changes is terminally ill. Mm. As a performer, it's tough. I mean, I think cancer, as we were talking about this earlier, it's like touched everybody's lives in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I think our show tries not to be sort of kind of uh, sentimental, I don't know what it is, I'm tr not trying to induce any kind of particular feeling from the audience member, you're just trying to find the truth of the situation. And I think in that moment, it, it was just that. It's somebody who's mourning the loss of a sister who's never quite got over, expecting a child on the way, and starting a new job, knows he's sick, and someone actually has to come and just lay it on the line. So it was kind of, there's, there's so much always going on in the writing that you almost don't have to put too much on it as the performer. The words right. sing, yeah, just and they slay right. you, just say them with truth, and then it does the rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Without a doubt, the subject matter is political. The issue of healthcare, specifically universal healthcare. Can a TV show help create change? I, 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 I think a TV show can be part of the conversation in a significant way. I don't know if, um, I, I, you certainly don't want to overstate. I don't, I don't know if, it, I don't know, but I, I think that a TV show can bring up questions that are worth discussing in conversations and, and, um, and, and certainly this show um, is basically just the telling of Eric's experience with healthcare, which I think is really, valid um, and maybe on its own is not going to create policy or, or cause change but maybe um, 
cause people who, who can affect change to, to think about it, perhaps, you know? What can we look forward to in upcoming episodes without giving too much away? People always want to tease, but I think they do enjoy watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's happening? What's happening on the show? Um, well, we are obviously going to keep having these discussions, um, our story of the week, if you like, and bring up as much discussion in varying areas as we can. But we, we do get to delve into their personal lives a little bit more, I think. I mm -hmm. think sometimes with dramas, like the story is the main character or the characterizations are, but you know, it's plot or characterization, but I feel like this one, you get like a happy medium. No, you're right. There's some really interesting sort of internal character expression coming up. God, that sounds so boring. Nobody wants to watch that. There's a sex scene. It's a great sex scene coming up. Uh, Jocko's naked. He looks no, incredible. No, and it's fantastic. Oh watch God, it. That, it's on Tuesday night. I said awesome. internal character and I was just like, that's brilliant. That show sounds terrible. Oh my God. Sorry. Um, yeah, no. It's uh, There's a whole lot of nudity and you're going to enjoy it. No, sorry. No, um, you don't need that for people to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Well, I, Jocko. I, yeah, yeah. He's, I like, he's, he's a good looking man. But, um, no, I mean, for my character, I mean, I will say what's interesting to me is like, you know, really having to think about some of this stuff is uncomfortable for me, thinking about receiving, you know, the, this treatment and, and putting myself in the shoes and thinking about death and confronting that and mm -hmm. your own mortality, especially if you had a child on the way. And so it stirs up things in me as, as a person. And, and so I think if it's doing that to me, then hopefully it's, it's, it'll be interesting at home. You also starred in Spike Lee's Black Klansman. What was it like to play a role like that? Oh man, it, it was just amazing to be a part of Spike's orchestra, be one of the players and come in and just um, be a part of that experience. And it was uh, very different, you know? He let me do something really different, which I will thank him for forever. And uh, you're so, 90% of your work is done because you get there and Spike Lee's directing, so you're good. Mm -hmm. You know? Short takes, really short takes. Yeah, he doesn't do a lot of takes. He keeps a really great sort of live environment where he doesn't over rehearse things and he doesn't even, he doesn't like a lot of decisions to be made. He likes to roll before you can think and oh, stuff. Wow. Yeah, so it kind of trips you up sometimes and That's awesome. messy stuff happens. It's cool. Yeah, so no, it's just a blessing to be a part of it and so happy for him to be nominated. And nobody would ever think that you're squeamish working on a medical <laughs> drama. Definitely. <laughs> How does that work? Blood needle? I, I'm not good with it. I mean, I've never liked getting a shot, you know, or, or seeing blood or, or just seeing all the internal stuff just really freaks me out. Are you like that? No, I, no. I, I watch them when they oh. take the blood. <laughs> never. Yeah. In fact, I can not tell ever. if they've got good technique or not, because I'm Jocko, like, that needle's never going. <laughs> never. Jo Jocko will be doing like a scene where he's cutting into a heart or something yeah. on the show, and they'll put real footage of a heart surgery on the screen where he's, you know, so that it looks, and I'm just, like, I can't. Can't I look at can't it. can't even do it, no. So do you have to, you just, you can't look? You have to walk I, out? I can do it so for funny. three seconds be between action and cut when we're rolling, and I can I can pretend I'm, I, it doesn't bother me, but otherwise, yeah. And Jocko will take full advantage of that and be like, hey man, just check the, and just put some horrific video in front of my face. I'm like, why, why do you torture me? And his family are medical professionals. Yeah. 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 It's so interesting. It's yeah. so fascinating how we are wired. Just how much is nature and nurture? Yeah, interesting. So you have to come to Philly. Yes, we'd love to. to. Run the right we'll take a train down. What's that? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I was just saying, what's that the thing that everybody orders? The <laughs> steak, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> what's the best place in Philly? Can you say? Can we say? This? Oh, if I say, I'll get in trouble. But there are a lot of good ones. There are a lot of good ones. Yeah. All, right. All right. When we come down, <laughs> Until we we'll try it. We'll try it on the sly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I will have more one-on-one -on -one interviews with the stars of NBC's hit shows all month long on NBC 10 News at 11. And don't forget to check out these videos over here. And please subscribe to our page by tapping the button below.